Are you ready to remove your negative items from your credit report permanently? Well, if you are, then this is the video that you want to watch because I'm going to show you how to use this to remove those accounts. Now, before we jump into what we're doing, I want to let you know that you can use the link in the description to access all the free offers and the paid ones as well, as well as everything that I have in my vault right on this page on the current offers. Now, not only can you do that, but we have an upcoming workshop and it's going to be live on the 12th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there is a link for you to also access or purchase the recording because again this is going to be live right there will be no replays so you will need to get the recording if you cannot make it all right so we're going to be talking about verified as accurate right you and i both know there is no such thing as verified as accurate because there's no such thing as an investigation and if the bureaus are responding to you and telling you that these things are verified as accurate you need to know what to do so if you want to get unstuck then use the links in the description to check out the previous video on how to deal with verified and no response and stall tactics as well as sign up for the actual workshop, all right? You know, we're talking about what to do when the bureaus don't respond, what to do when there's stall tactics, what to do when they're verified as accurate, and all of these things in depth will be in that workshop. Now, let's jump right in into what we're talking about today, okay? And like I said, you're going to use this to remove your accounts. Now, if you want to see if I can do this for you in actual credit sweeps, so you don't have to worry about any of these things and dealing with all these reasons and the workflow and all of that, then head over to my740.com, schedule a call with me, and I will see if I can help. But we're going to be looking at three different things. I'm going to give you a workflow on dispute reasons for collections, charge-offs, late payments, bankruptcies, judgments and tax liens, identity theft, and inquiries, as well as we're going to go over the plug in print, which is going to help you create your actual dispute reason using the perfect formula, the Ajero formula. All right. So with the perfect dispute reason creator, it's very simply a form that you can just plug your information in. You go over here, copy this result and come down into Word or whatever other processor that you have. You paste it and voila, all you have to do is add in your facts. All right. So we're going to talk about that in a moment, but let's get over to the dispute reasons because this is the key to your results. Okay. And in the future, we're going to be talking about Metro 2 and a couple of other things. But for right now, we're sticking with factual. Okay. Now, even with Metro 2, you're still dealing with the facts, but just in a little bit of a different way in challenging the reporting. Now with factual based disputes, all right, factual based. We're not coming up with anything. We are not pretending to know everything. We are only dealing with what they, the bureaus, creditors, and collectors actually report themselves. So let's start with collections. And I'm trying to get this into the screen for you to see it. Um, all right. If you cannot see this, then I will try to zoom in post-production and then we'll zoom back out when we get to charge off. So for collections, and this is third party collections, and we're going from round one on, okay? We have the account is unknown. So remove for unknown collection. Second round would be, how did you verify this account, right? I notified you that this account is unknown. How did you verify this account and where did you get the documentation that would prove that this is my account? Method of collection verification. What's the method used to verify this account? There is no method. There is no validation. Delete this immediately, right? Proof and then did not verify. Okay. So collector did not verify. And there's actually a letter um, that I know a lot of companies use. And sorry, if you're getting queasy watching this, I'm trying to make this so that it can be a little bit bigger. All right. So I know this is partially out of the screen, but when the credit bureaus do not receive something from the collector, obviously it means that it could not be verified. And if they cannot furnish it, then it needs to be deleted. So the collector ignored my dispute letter, did not send me anything to verify this. And by not responding, agreed that this is unverifiable account. All right. So now let's go over to charge-offs. Now charge-offs are significantly more difficult to remove. All right. And this is why we have so many things that we have to do with factual disputes and it's a manual process. You're not going to get away with automating this process. So stop trying to, okay. If you are a business, you need to put the time into learning how to do factual disputes. If you have clients, you need to make sure that you're doing the best possible for them. And that is by finding the information that the bureaus, creditors, and collectors report themselves. Date of last activity, all right? Reason, three different dates under the date of last activity. Remove immediately. How is this account accurate when 
the date of last activity shows three different dates, right? That's pretty straightforward. And same thing for date of last payment, all right? Method of verification. What was the method of verification? Now, you're going to take this method of verification, you're going to stick it into the first paragraph, and then you're going to include a dispute reason that backs up why this account does not belong on the credit report, such as using method of verification with data last payment, or method of verification with date last reported, or method of verification with so on and so forth, okay? Proof of validation. Send me the proof of validation or remove this account for failure to perform a proper investigation, and you can actually go after the original creditor, right? Or the data furnisher. So the only time that they can say something is verified is when they actually performed their duties under section 623. If they didn't, then number one, it cannot be coming uh, back as frivolous. And number two, you can get them and go after them with that same dispute reason because they didn't perform their duties, right? Late payments after charge off. Remove immediately due to the fact that there are late payments after the close date. If you don't know the close date, go based off of when it was charged off. Violation for continued reporting of late payments after charge off. You're in violation by continuing to report this unverified and inaccurate account. Date of status. Date last reported. Date of update. Data status shows that you didn't investigate investigate this account, remove immediately. Now, if they had, they would have changed that data status, that date last reported, that status update date to be when they verified the account. If they didn't, it means they did not investigate the account. Proof of investigation, independent investigation. Show me the proof that you ever did an investigation to begin with. Monthly payment on closed account. How is there a monthly payment on a closed account? That doesn't make any sense, like please, Dude, listen to me. This account is closed. How can there be a monthly payment on a closed account? There cannot be a monthly payment on a closed account, all right? Now, theoretically, on the accounting side, yes, there can be. The account is closed. They want their money. You're paying it back to them. But on the reporting end of it, the account should be open and then have a monthly payment. Otherwise, it does not belong on there, such as having a charged off account with a monthly balance, uh, excuse me, a monthly payment. Balance. You can say, hey, look, this is the wrong balance. But this is, as you can see at the bottom of the hierarchy, there's like 50 other things that are on top of this that would get the account removed prior. All right. And then past due. So let's go on to the next one. The next one is going to be, was it judgments and tax liens? No, nope, it's late payments. I was never late. Update to paid as agreed. And you are going to put the dates in here. You're going to put dates and balances and whatever it is that's going to back up your reason, okay? With the facts. That's why it's called factual disputes. You didn't verify this late payment, right? If they don't verify it, if they don't validate it, if they don't prove it, then that means that it's just hearsay. So if it's just hearsay, then it's not legal. And if it's not legal, it doesn't belong on there, right? How did you verify this late payment? Where is the documentation? Where's the bank statement that belongs to the data furnisher proving that I didn't pay on X date? If they don't have it, if they can't furnish it, they're going to, then it needs to be removed. Bank records or transaction proof. And that's exactly what I was just talking about. Send me the bank records and transaction documentation due to the fact that you're required to have this prior to even reporting it to determine accuracy. Proof of investigation. Dude, just prove that you actually investigated. Method of verification. We already went over that one. Proof of validation. We already went over that one. Okay, so now let's go over to bankruptcy. Invalid court name. It has to report as U.S. Bankruptcy Court City and State. If it doesn't, if it just says U.S. BKRPT, if it says U.S. DIST, if it says Federal DIST, if it says anything other than U.S. Bankruptcy CT City slash uh, City comma State, then it needs to be removed. All right. Filing date, invalid filing date, method of BK verification. Did they get it from LexisNexis? Did they go through Pacer? Did they go to the county website? What was your method and where is your documentation? And that goes to proof of BK validation. Copy of the petition, failure to verify, correct, or remove, and this is pursuant to FCRA requirements. And you can even say something like um, non-compliance of an accurate information reported on the consumer report, right? Section 603, I did not provide my permission for this account to report on my credit file. Pursuant to section 603, you need to remove this immediately. All right, so let's go over to judgments and tax liens. These are really easy to remove. So filing date inconsistency, court name, document, send me the copy of the court documents, plaintiff, which I've also seen, failure to provide the actual documents, 
right? They can't, it's just hearsay. If it's just reported, anybody can report anything. I can report that the president of the United States owes me $50 million. Now, does that mean that it's legit? No, I have to prove it. So otherwise, anybody could say anything. Proof of the actual investigation. So I think I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller so that we can do the last one, but um, identity theft. Not mine. Proof of ownership. Furnished documentation. Creditor 623. CFEB, AG, BBB, FTC complaints. Proof of investigation for identity theft. Proof of verification for identity theft. Proof of validation for identity theft and violation. Now, I think I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller. Oh, that's too small. Let's try this one. All right. Inquiry. Yeah, it's still going to be outside of it. So I'm just going to read it to you. Unknown inquiry, proof of signature, proof of inquiry verification, creditor inquiry dispute, bureau creditor didn't validate, bureau proof of validation, illegal inquiries, CFPB, AG, BBB complaints, and section 604. All right. And you can actually see all of these. Um, I, I may try to put the links in the description, but if you do not have access to Airtable and you don't pay for it, you won't be able to access the app that I just showed you, but you can access the list version, which is what you're looking at right now. Okay. Um, and they all are by category. So collection at the top, charge offs, late payments, bankruptcy, judgments, tax lien, so on and so forth. So let's go over and start creating some dispute reasons with the plug and print. So this is really, really simple. You have to have like Word or something else open like this. See, because, all right, I'm going to fill out the creditor name and account number. We're going to make this super, super simple. We're just going to say that this is Barclays and the account number is one, two, three, four, five. And what we are disputing is the date last reported. The reason that is inaccurate is that it was not updated even though the credit bureau stated it was verified as accurate. And I know that this is a little bit outside of the side of my screen. Now I have to determine if this is going to be delete for inaccuracy, correct for inaccuracy, delete for violation or correct for violation. And I'm going to say delete this account for inaccuracy. So all I do is come over here and in this first column where it says copy result, I do control C. I'm using a PC, so it is control C. I'm going to come over to Word. And I'm just going to paste it. And it gives me a full dispute reason. Barclays, one, two, three, four, five. Delete this account for inaccuracy because the date last reported was not updated, even though the credit bureau stated it was verified as accurate. You see how simple that is? Now we have another one that does this. And you can find the links in the description for this, all right? So with the perfect dispute reason creator, this is very, very similar. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. See, the reason that we're doing this is because you need to get very, very proficient at making these dispute reasons pop. You need to become an expert at creating dispute reasons that get results. And you need to become the only person that's going to have your side with fixing your credit. All right. So when you know how to do these things, you can dispute anything that you could possibly have on your credit report. And that is why we're doing this. All right. So we actually have a form. So I'm actually going to get rid of this. Okay, so this is the form. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller because you cannot see it. Okay, so the disputes of tomorrow looks very, very awesome. So let me just see if I can move my screen over a little bit. There we go. We have a form and we're just going to type in some information. Okay, so um, the only thing that you have to do after copying the result is add in the facts. So we're going to say um, creditor name. Let's use uh, discovered. Account number one, two, three, four, five. The outcome that I want is delete because it's a charge off, right? What element is inaccurate? We're going to say first data delinquency. Choose a reason. Is it missing, incorrect, inaccurate, incomplete, wrong, reporting different amounts, reporting different dates, reporting inaccurate amounts, reporting inaccurate dates. So because we're doing the first data delinquency, we are going to say that it's reporting inaccurate dates. And then now we have to choose a dispute type. Is it an account, inquiry, or personal information? It's an account. We're going to click on submit. And then it actually will show up in our table. So it tells you right here, return to the table to copy your completed dispute reason. Click on the dispute reason result table. So let's go back over here. Go to the table. 
and it's right here in row 13 where it says entry number 13 delete this account because the first day delinquency is reporting in accurate dates so i'm going to copy this come down here go to a new line and as you can see that's exactly what it says it put my dispute reason together for me now all i have to do is fill in the information let's just say i don't know experian reports um you know this date equifax reports this date and transunion reports this date super super simple it's very very straightforward right so this is going to help you to build the proper reasons to make the perfect letter to get as many possible results as you could get with whatever you are disputing, all right? So you need to use these to remove your accounts, remove your collections, your foreclosures, your repossessions, your bankruptcies. This information is here so that you can move forward, so that you can get where you need to be. You can get the credit, you can get the loans, you can get your family into better housing or a better neighborhood or get a better job or make more money. Whatever it is that your goal is, I'm here to help you obtain that, all right? So make sure that you go, use the links in the description to access this. You can also find it on the current offers page and make sure that you register for this workshop the verified as accurate workshop where i'm going to show you how to get unstuck when the bureaus verify as accurate or ignore you or send out stall tactics all right so that is it for today have a great day make sure that you schedule that call with me for a free consultation for a credit sweep if you do not want to do this yourself because yeah it's a lot of work all right so I will see you at that Unstuck When the Bureau's Verify as Accurate live workshop, but I will see you tomorrow. Bye.